So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I am Ahmed Salam, the moderator of this MGBS lecture, and I would like to welcome you in the third MGBS seminar. Uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce our uh, outstanding guest speaker, Dr. Hewan, um, Associate Professor, uh, Hawass University, uh, Ethiopia. Uh, she got uh, her uh, PSC in Biological Sciences in um, one, uh, 1999, uh, from Addis Ababa University, Ethiopia, and then she moved to Japan to get her master and PhD studies in plant biotechnology resource engineering to Saba uh, to Scuba University, Japan, uh, and then she uh, had one year research attachment from 2014 to 2015 in Iowa State University, United States. Uh, she is a member in uh, three professional membership. Uh, such as International Society of Seed Science and Society of Ethiopian Biotechnology, uh, Swiss Society of Ethiopian Women in Science and Technology. Uh, she got three awards, including Mulpushu Scholarship Awards and African Women in Agriculture and Development Awards. Uh, she has uh, a lot of uh, good publications in the field of plant biotechnology, and I would like to thank her so much for accepting uh, the invitation uh, and for uh, submitting her application to be a speaker in MGBS. Uh, please uh, go ahead and uh, start your presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdella, for your uh, uh, humble and uh, nice introduction. Uh, I will go directly to my presentation. Uh, this is integration of one kilo base pair insertion at the five prime UTR uh, region of the HVS gene improves plant performance under acidic soils growth condition in barley. Uh, this work is not done only by me, rather, uh, we are uh, collaborating with uh, Okayama University in the Institute of Plant uh, Stress and Resource with uh, Professor Sato. And uh, one of my uh, master students, she already graduated and she is now uh, the graduate assistant at Njibara University here in Ethiopia, more in the northern part of Ethiopia. So uh, I'll go to directly to the introduction. Uh, this picture shows you a different collection of uh, barley that we have collected uh, here in the southern part of Ethiopia. You can see that there is a huge diversity. But uh, this diversity doesn't um, let us uh, to continue in the future because of uh, acid stress. So I'll explain that uh, in detail. So uh, my presentation outline have introduction. I will also briefly introduce about our material methods and the resulting discussion and the conclusion and recommendation. Uh, first, when we look at the barley, when we are comparing it with the world, we can see that uh, the leading barley producer uh, in the world is Germany, uh, United Kingdom, and the uh, United States of America. Uh, but you know, from African perspective, uh, the majority of the African countries, and, uh, including Egypt, uh, Tunisia, Morocco, uh, which are one of the uh, leading uh, barley producers, they have seen a significantly low yield and specifically, when you come to Ethiopia, there is significant reduction in the yield uh, because of, um, as you see here, the, uh, the brown colored, um, the brown colored uh, dots here. So Ethiopians uh, barley production is less than two ton per hectare. Uh, even uh, with the decades, I, I tried to uh, present it here. Uh, the Ethiopian barley production, this uh, this is small one, it shows you like you know, there is high reduction of barley uh, from 1960 to 2010. Uh, actually, like you know, I have more data, but I haven't presented here. So uh, what does this tell us? Uh, when we come to Ethiopia, barley is really important. It is one of the fifths um, um, uh, uh, crop plant which is cultivated uh, in Ethiopia. About 9% of the cereal production in Ethiopia is barley. However, the bar uh, this barley, we, uh, we don't use it for other purpose, mainly we use it for food. 
I think this is this trend is a little bit different compared to the Western country. The use of barley is diversified in Ethiopia. The first thing that I really like to tell you in Ethiopia, barley is an iconic figure for celebration of birth. Every one of us, when we are born, uh, after three days or seven days, the mothers, they uh, pre prepare uh, this uh, gamfo. It is a kind of porridge. And they invite all the relatives and villagers or neighborhoods, and they celebrate the birth of a child. So it has a, a deep connection to the Ethiopian culture. And as you can see, uh, barley can be used for uh, making injera. This is one of our pan, uh, flat bread, which uh, looks like a pancake. And also we make uh, bread out of barley. And uh, we mix uh, the floor of uh, barley, the roasted uh, floor of uh, barley with butter, and we can make it for a long lasting snack. And also we mix barley with different uh, cereals and we can make like, you know, some kind of delicious uh, breakfast. And uh, as you see here, which we call it beso, which is one of like, you know, our snack. And uh, kolo is another snack that we make it uh, from uh, roasted barley for uh, entertaining guests during the meeting everywhere in Ethiopia. This is how we use it. And we do have also traditional drinks, which we call it Ella and Shameda and Darake. And nowadays, the commercial use of barley is really dominated into the beer production. And you can see barley is a major value chain in the livelihood of Ethiopia. Uh, so it is really a good uh, income generation and it engages people in the market uh, and uh, value chain uh, system in the country. So, but our productivity is very low. And when we look at the Ethiopian region with the production, you can see that like now, nowadays we do have different regions in Ethiopia. The Southern nation is this region where uh, I am I'm belonging, the Southern nation of Ethiopia. Uh, the highest um, barley production region is Oromia, followed by the Amara region in the north. And also Tigray regions have a humble production of barley, 9%. But when we come to the southern part of Ethiopia, the, our productivity is about, the production is about 8% of the country, the country total. So it shows us there is like no, less, less production in the southern part. So we have to ask why? That is when we look at the acid soil distribution in Ethiopia, this map clearly shows us the uh, acidic soil in Ethiopia because the south, the west and the southwest part of Ethiopia is uh, dominated by a lot of mountains and it is highland and specifically in the southern part it is a high altitude uh, mountains and plateaus are there and um, it is um, one of a big rain uh, region where we belong there. So you can see the acidic uh, uh, soil is very high. So what does that mean? If there is a high acidic soil, it means we do have like no low available nitrogen and phosphorus, which are really important for plant growth. And the acidic concept, the acidic pH that is about, uh, which ranges from uh, 4.5 to 6.5, it uh, really uh, affects the um, cation and like you know, the, the element is exchangeability. And specifically in the high altitude, the soil become eroded, leaching the soil and with the, into the lower uh, laying areas. As a result, we'll have poor exchangeable cations and low in base uh, situation. So this decreases the yield and it uh, lowers the quality of barley and also other crops in Ethiopia. So we have to ask then why the Ethiopian soil become acidic. So this is the related to the genesis of the Ethiopian soil, which is because it is formed from the ignorant and basalt prochlorotic type of deposit. And this generation, the genesis of the soil, uh, have high accumulation of iron. So the majority of the Ethiopian soil, when you look at it, it is red. 
that is because of high accumulation of iron and also aluminum oxides. And this aluminum oxide, it is uh, freely, it's abundant and it's dominant according to this publication. Not only that, what is really happening in our region is because we do have high rain, this high rain really um, uh, uh, produces like, you know, because like the acid parental material is there, then this high rain will leach the soil and, and, uh, with low lime soil and uh, it, it leaches the soil and as a result, it increases the soil acidity. And the other one is recently, specifically from 20 years before, they start using ammonium fertilizer. That also ammonium fertilizer has its own impact on increasing the soil acidity. The other one is the use of high yielding cropping plants. These high yielding cropping plants are really good for the food of the society, but these high yielding crop planters, they have high activity in extracting the mineral element in that region. So as a result, whenever we are like, you know, harvesting, we take everything together. As a result, we don't leave some kind of organic matter on the soil. So that also increases the soil. So the other one is decomposing the, the organic matter, which increases the hydrogen ion toxicity, which releases hydrogen ion, which increases acidity. So all in all, the acidity of Ethiopia is not like you know, only one factor, but it is really integrated. Different, uh, different phenomena are really involved in it. So what is the effect of this acid because it creates leaching of the base elements which are really are calcium magnesium sodium and potassium and integrate uh, the suitable nutrients such as calcium magnesium magnesium will be replaced by aluminium and also phosphorus fixation will happen as you know phosphorus is one of the most important element for the DNA block, and that means it is really important for the cell development. So this really creates uh, a lot of problem which, uh, which makes it unavailable for the crops and the crop will not grow normally. So when we look at aluminum availability based on this paper, which is published in 2017, it is shows that in the world we have 8.0% of aluminum, which is one of abundant. But you no, know, this aluminum is found in three forms. One is mineral, the other one is precipitate, and the other one is iron. So the mineral and the precipitate, they don't have any effect. However, when aluminum becomes in the iron form, it is really dangerous. Why? As you can see here, the, when the pH is really changing uh, from uh, basic to acidic, what will happen is that the aluminum ion become available between the range of 5.5 to 4.5. So this is really uh, very toxic for many plants. And from that, barley is considered one of the sensitive to acidic soil because it doesn't tolerate, it can't tolerate the aluminum ion and because it abrates the root system uh, and uh, it kills the root systems and immediately the barley root is not able to extract any type of uh, nutrient, then the growth and productivity of barley will become lower. So when this problem is really happening, but uh, there was a solution because every time good people are really doing their research all over the world. So one of the interesting uh, discovery which happened from uh, IPSR, that is from Okayama University, they have identified the gene which is responsible for chelating aluminum ion. That gene is HVAST1 gene. It is uh, releases citrate. So as you can see from this picture, uh, this is uh, this is uh, research has been done uh, by using um, uh, uh, transforming uh, yeast uh, by using this uh, HVST gene. In the presence of HVST genes and in the absence of HVST gene, you can see that there is significant difference in the expression of the gene. 
So what is really happening is that uh, specifically in the Murasa Kimochi, one of the land race from Japan, uh, the, uh, in the presence of aluminium, the citrate secretion significantly increases. So when they uh, search it on where the secretion, where in which part of the plant the secretion is really going on, they identify that this expression is really taking place in the uh, in the basal root tip, and compared to morix, the morix is one of malt barley, which is well known for many researchers. And Murasa Kimochi is a land race from Japan. It is a food barley. You can see that in the root tip, it has less expression, but in the basal root tip, there is higher expression and constitutive expression of aluminium. That means the aluminium will be expressed whether there is aluminium in the substrate or without aluminium. So this is what they have discovered. Uh, but uh, later on in 2012, uh, one paper has been published in Nature. That is the presence or not only the presence of HBS gene coding uh, for uh, uh, aluminium tolerance, rather the presence of one kilobase pair insertion resulting to the constitutive expression of HBS gene and producing citrate in the basal root tip. Uh, 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 of uh, barley. So when you look at this gene, it has um, the the gene has about 1,600 HVS gene is about 1,668 base pair, and it has uh, about it encodes about 558 amino acid, and there are as you can see there are. Uh, 13 exons and 12 introns, but in the UTR region, there is the um, the transcription start site. So this transcription start site uh, is about six kilo base pair in the morex, which is one of aluminium susceptible um, uh, cultivar. But in the case of uh, Murasa Kimochi, the same gene, it has a, a, some kind of multiple transcription start site insertion. This is about, it, it is about one kilo base pair. So this, the presence of the multiple uh, transcription start site is responsible for the constitutive expression of HVAC gene in the basal root tip of barley. So as you can see, it is only one kilobase pair. So research has been done uh, with uh, different uh, land races, which is collected throughout the world. And it shows that uh, aluminum sensitive cultivars, they don't have one kilobase pair insertion, while aluminum tolerant cultivars, they have this insertion. So it clearly shows that the presence of one kilobase pair insertion uh, really the uh, uh, the 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 promoter which um, expresses HV estrogen in the basal roots of the barley. So what we have on our hand is here. If we wanted to improve any agronomic trait, breeding using marker assisted selection is important. But when we get in the case of barley, it is a diploid to n is equal to 40. So this genetic system, it makes it easier to analyze the gene function and also to introgress with this one kilobase per insertion into the um, barley lines without the insertion. So our objective is on this basis. The first objective is generation of barley lines with one kilo base pair insertion of this SHVST gene one. And the second research objective is identifying barley lines with enhanced tolerance to acid stress based on yield associated trait in, uh, in acid trait, uh, stress treatments. So I'll go to directly to how we have generated for the uh, one kilo base pair insertion. And this is uh, our uh, crossing diagram. 
The first plant is Murasaki Mochi, which is already identified with one kilobase per insertion. So we labeled it as uh, capital AA. And we cross it with Ethiopian 9232. Uh, uh, this is the uh, second parent, so uh, it, which lacks one kilobase per insertion. So it is with uh, it's in, within it is a diploid chromosome, it is small AA. So we cross them and uh, we get the F1, which is capital A, small a uh, in the genome. Uh, we check that and we allow the F1 to self-pollinate and generate the F2 lines. So since we are targeting only this part of the gene, so we were able to see the dominant lines, uh, that means capital A, capital A in among the F2 lines, and the capital A and small a, the heterozygous lines, and small a, small a, which are the, uh, without the one kilobase pair insertion. So our selection pattern will become only focusing on capital A, 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 that means they have the insertion of one kilobase pair. And also, we can select capital A and small a. That means with the insertion of one kilobase pair in one of the chromosome and without the insertion of one kilobase pair in the other uh, chromosome. As a result, this can go into the segregation. So this is uh, the, uh, we use the um, PCR based on the design marker of the one kilobase pair insertion. So you can see here, Number one is our negative control. There is nothing, it's just water. But from two to 11, it is all Ethiopian lines, including the land races, uh, which are uh, abundantly used here in Ethiopia, and also the related varieties. So all of them, they don't have uh, the one kilobase per insertion. And from 12 to 30, you can see that there is one um, band so this one deep band, it shows that the presence of one kilobase per insertion, the number 13 is Murasaki Mochi, and number 12 is Harunanijo 80, which is already developed by introgressing of one kilobase per insertion. So from 14 to 19, you can see two bands. These two bands are F2 lines that we have generated. And then we allow these lines to uh, segregate into the F2 generation, and we use the PCR method in order to detect whether the presence of insertion or the pattern of insertion in the, among the F2 lines. And we have seen that, like you know, different type of the three pattern of insertion. There is no insertion here, as you can see, which I circled it in red. And there is like, you know, a, a two bundles, one in one, uh, one, uh, 1,800 base pair band, a thick band, and the other one is at 800 base pair, another faint band, which is diploid, which look like a heterozygous F2. And as you can see, eight, uh, plant number eight, it doesn't have any insertion similar to the first one to five lines and these are like and also you can see different pattern of segregation so we uh, genotyped all of the f2 lines by using this pattern so you can see that like you know all different type of the, um, the segregation of the one kilobase per insertion has been detected by pcr so we use this one and since our uh, we ha we have to check that whether this one kilobase per in inheritance pattern is following Mendelian inheritance pattern, we have we cross uh, Ethiopian line with Murasaki mochi, and we may also reciprocal cross Murasaki mochi with Ethiopian line. And in each of the cases, we have three replications. So through all these three replication, as the chi square shows that there is no significant deviation of one to two to one inheritance pattern. So this is really a good sign for us and we use these lines for the second experiment. So the second objective was in order to uh, evaluate the F2 lines under acidic soil condition. So I will try to explain how we grow these lines. So first we have to check how the 
the acidity uh, of the soil. Uh, we dug up out the soil and uh, we collect the soil sample and we send it to um, the soil analysis company who analyze like you know the exchangeable cations in each in, in the soil and also the acidity so you can see this experiment has been done in Gumer. it is one of acidic soil area which is which is about 3400 meter above uh, above sea level it's high altitude uh, in the southern region of ethiopia the soil analysis shows here the pH is about 4.8 and the most impressive part is about the exchangeable aluminium. As you can see that it's about 2.5 uh, mq per 100 gram. This is about uh, 350 um, gram per 100 gram of soil. That is a lot of aluminium. So higher aluminum is compared to other research papers, like we have, we checked the different papers. So in our research, there is high aluminum concentration. So this shows that this is really a good place for us to check our uh, F2 lines. Then when we planted these F2 lines in bulk, so since we have already characterized them based on PCR, so you can see this bulk uh, Murasaki Mochi is a tolerant one. As you see, like it has clearly very good root system, but those lines without one kilobase per insertion, the root system is not uh, long. But you no, know, the introgressed one, the F2 line with the insertion, it shows like you no know, longer root system. Okay, but you no, know, when we look at the plant above ground, there is no significant difference. So we have to let all of the planters to grow in that acidic soil condition, whether they are going to produce seed or have improved agronomic performance. That's what we really wanted to check. And then we planted the seeds into this acidic soil. So first, our uh, experimental design is RCBD augmented design. Why we use RCBD augmented design is because our F2 lines are, each of the F2 lines are unique. So we don't, we can't replicate them. So rather than replicating our F2 lines, what we use is the check land races. These check land races are Audo, El Kotekur, and Shege. Shege is one of uh, a released variety. But Audo and Chalkotokor is like you know, one of the variety which is widely used in the Gumer area for uh, cultivating, uh, for uh, barley cultivation. So we use this one normally, they are like you know, adapted to that area. So we wanted to check whether our lines are better or lower than these uh, uh, checks. So in this RCBD design, we multiplicated in each block this Audo Chalkotokor and shaggy, but the F2 lines have been only planted in one block, and one block has only unique F2 lines. And also the Murasaki Mochi line, and also the uh, Ethiopian parent line, ET 8232 is also planted together. So we have used 26 block, and our treatment is 329. Uh, lines, including the check variety and the test treatment. The test treatment is the two parental lines and the 324 F2 lines. And these are the, uh, the check varieties. And we have evaluated 12 agronomic traits because these 12 agronomic traits planted number of tiller, penicule lengths, penicule extrusion lengths, flag leaf lengths, flag leaf widths, uh, all lengths, shoot lengths, number of kernel per plant, number of kernel per spike, and yield per plant and thousand seed weight per plant are one of the indicator for yield and yield related trade in barley. So we measure this in, at the physiological maturity. So this is, it shows a picture when the students and also the farmer when planting the seed. And this is how the growth condition of the planters in the field. And then uh, we collected our data, all the measured, our, uh, measured quantitative trait, and we use the linear mixed model. 
We have to use the linear mixed model because for us, the checks are, are like a fixed effect, but the new treatment that we really wanted to see, the new entries are as a kind of random effect. So we have to check how they are really performing under these conditions. This is the uh, um, experimental, the linear mixed model that we use in order to analyze our data. And we use actually our software for our uh, all of our uh, um, data analysis. So I'll go to the descriptive statistics. So you can see here uh, all the traits, except that of all lengths, plug leaf widths, and also number of tiller. Uh, there is significant variation in terms of the minimum and the maximum value. For example, here, I can mention here the thousand seed weight. Some of the minimum value is zero. That implies that even if the plants are really growing, they don't have any seed. So we can't measure any seed. And yield plant is also zero. But you know, the maximum value is about 87 uh, uh, and uh, 31 yield per plant. That is gram, uh, we measured it in gram. And the similarly, the plant heat is the minimum is that they are very short one, 11.44 centimeter up to 125 centimeter. So this shows that there is a, a clear uh, variation among the measured phenotypic trait in the uh, F2 labs. So this implies that the presence of promising candidate genotypes to be used in the further breeding improvement program. And uh, analysis of variance shows that, as you can see, the block effect, uh, except for plant head, tiller number, and pedicular extrusion lengths, implant lengths, and flag leaf weights. Uh, all the others like you know, no significance, not that much. But you can see in the case of the treatment, that means all of the lines and the check and the genotype, there is significant variation, except with that of the uh, own lingus. Uh, that means the own lingus might not have additive effect from both of the parents. They might have like you no know, similar gene. We have, I have no idea. We have to do some kind of uh, detailed analysis, but you know, we didn't find any significant difference. So the analysis of variance shows that the mean square D2 genotype were highly significant, and it is a really good indicator to show us like, you know, there might be some, uh, some lines that we can select for a better performance. So the estimation of genetic parameter shows that here that uh, the mean value and uh, phenotypic variation, genetic variation, including environmental variation, is really present here. Constitutively, the number of kernel per plant shows that higher phenotypic variation, genetic variation, and also environmental variation, and the genetic coefficient of variation and the phenotypic coefficient of variation is really high, including that of uh, environmental coefficient of variation. So uh, when we look at the heritability, uh, the, it shows that like you no know, less heritability, uh, like you know, it is 46.3. Uh, the smallest one is 19.3, but you know, we are not able to calculate the heritability for all lingers because it doesn't have any kind of variation. But you know, the highest uh, heritability has been found 98.1% and 96.5% for thousand seed weight and plant head. And this is a good indicator that we can select with the genetic advance value. For example, in the case of number of kernel per plant, 104.3 is the highest one and 0 0.3 for frog leaf width is the lowest one. Okay, so this indicates that uh, these agronomic traits with higher GCV and PCV values, they have indicated that a large genetic control of the traits, and hence there is a possibility to improve through the selection. And also similar uh, findings has been done for phenotypic correlation and genotypic correlation. As you see, the majority of like, you know, the phenotypic correlation is least in the case of phenicol extrusion links and all links, but also like you know, high in the case of flag leaf, uh, flag leaf and uh, phenicol extrusion. And also here you can see that the majority of trait, for example, 0 0.76 is found with uh, phenicol 
uh, lengths and vertical extrusion lengths, and also yield per plant and, and uh, number of tiller has a strong correlation in the terms of phenotypic correlation. And the genotypic correlation coefficient also gives us this, this part, the upper uh, part, so that there is uh, specifically 1,000 seed weight and yield per plant are strong correlation. They have a strong genetic correlation with number of kernel per plant, number of tiller, and uh, also uh, number of uh, uh, kernel per spike. So this indicates it is possibility to improve one trait through indirect selection. For example, if you wanted to, to uh, improve uh, south, uh, the um, thousand seed weight, so we can select for uh, the number of tiller or pedingle extrusion length or something like that. And the other one we wanted to check is a PCA plot. Uh, we made the PCA plot uh, by using the BLEP, that means the base linear unbiased prediction of the uh, traits, the 12 traits. And when we are using that, as you can see here, the first principal component uh, separated the majority of the about 53.5%. It explains about 53 0.5% uh, of the variation. So as you can see that number of kernel yield per plant, number of tiller, number of kernel per spikes are very high in the first principal component analysis. And the second principal component analysis also, it's uh, contributed about 9.6%. So overall, like, you know, from these uh, two principal component analysis, we're able to get about like, uh, 60, uh, about 62% uh, or like you know, 63% of the variation. So when uh, the color indicate here, the green one are those genotypes with uh, the um, AA genotypes, that means they look like the Ethiopian original type without insertion of one kilo base pair. And the brown are, uh, with one kilo base per insertion and uh, without insertion, these are uh, heterozygous. But like here, the blue one are all of them. They are with AA, the capital AA. That means they have one kilo base per insertion. They look like the second mother. That is uh, Murasaki Mochi. So. This positive correlation between the trait is primarily responsible for the selection of the same genotype. So you can see, so that means those genotypes with uh, insertion show a better performance in the agronomic traits which we have measured. And we have also done single linkage analysis by using this one kilo base pair uh, marker because it is a marker. We can use it as, as it is only one marker, but you no, know, it is better to add more marker, but we use it. So except with the all lingers, we are able to find that there is significant phenotypic uh, variation explained due to the presence or absence of the one kilo base pair insertion. So this demonstrates that this marker accessibility was efficient at pinpointing the HBS gene for selecting the smallest donor segment on 48 because the uh, HBS gene is found on the four uh, fourth of uh, the chromosome of barley. And when we are screening the F2 lines and this accelerating progression of HVST gene in uh, the one kilo base pair insertion into the Ethiopian barley, which never been there, but now we are able to introgress it. And we have proof that it has also better agronomic performance. And we are also dig out the soil at, after uh, collecting every sample. So you can see here, those F2 lines with the insertion, they have way better performance of the root rate. This is Murasaki Mochi. It is better, but like, you know, you can see that like, you know, the introgressed one has more, uh, more root number and longer compared to the Mrasa Kimochi. And the heterozygous are also better while without the insertion of one kilo base pair, you can see that there is significant reduction in the root. So this might have accelerated for the good performance of the agronomic trait in our introgressed barley lights.
So the length with one kilo base per insertion yielded significantly more number of roots and root lengths than the it is full sieved line in soil based assay. So what is the advantage of the current breeding for Ethiopia? Uh, Munasa Kimochi and the Ethiopian line are both used for food. And barley is primary food crop in many of the Ethiopians. It is dominant uh, other grains where it is the only cereal specifically in the highlands of uh, uh, in the highland area of Ethiopia. So especially in those regions where food insecurity is expected to be a major threat. So uh, the barley crop with considerable socioeconomic and political importance have a leading significance in the food security issue. So in summary, we barley lines with insertion of one kilo base pair as the five prime material region of HVST G1 was generated. And this lines has been confirmed by using polymerase chain reaction. And the lines with one kilo base pair insertion as the five prime material region showed significant better agronomic trait. Thus, our study precisely developed barley genotypes with the one kilo base pair insertion as a five prime UTR region of HVST1. So the recommendation is the present study had to create this into grass lines, uh, but valuable technology, it is a valuable technology for the future breeding specifically in Ethiopia. And we suggest that developing a recombinant embryo line to uh, map the major agronomic trait, KTL mapping, and to generate better insight for barley breeding programs in Ethiopia. So this is the area where we are working and I really like to acknowledge uh, uh, many thanks for the member of the Institute of Plant Stress and Resource uh, from Okayama University for Barley Genetic Resource and Stress Breeding Program. And I really like to uh, the farmers who lend their fields for this research and the Plant Biotechnology Graduate Program and the School of Plant and Horticulture Science in College of Agriculture, Hawassa University Community. And my special thanks goes to Mrs. Yamaji, a senior technician from the Institute of Plant Stress and Resource. Many of the papers which is published in Nature, the beautiful uh, plant bite like you know, bonding and PCR results or uh, SNP generation has been done by Mrs. Yamaji. She is really an excellent technician. So I really like Okayama University. And this is a field from uh, Gumer. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for this uh, very nice and informative presentation. And uh, now we open uh, the discussion. So you can write your question in the chat room or just raise your hand and I can allow the mic so people can uh, ask their questions by voice. So do we have any question from audience? So I would like to uh, to start uh, with the, with my, my question. So uh, actually, in, uh, you when you collected the soil samples from the field, so at which depth you collected uh, your uh, soil samples? Um, actually, uh, the, I forgot the exact pattern, but you know, we consulted uh, the soil science department and um, they collected the sample based on that um, pattern. But you know, I'm sorry to, I was uh -huh. not able to answer your question because I, yeah. uh, I didn't get the reference here. But you know, uh -huh. we follow the pattern of the soil sampling. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, maybe you have a question here. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we have a question. Uh, yeah, Yusuf, go ahead. Unmute your mic and ask your question, please. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? 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 Yes, yes I we can, can hear you. Okay. Uh, as we all know, uh, the dangers of uh, genetic engineering. How do we uh, make sure that uh, insertion will not uh, negatively affect uh, the to 
the people or the animals who feed on this modified violence. Thank you. Uh, if I understand your question precisely, how can we make sure that this uh, modified is not affecting plant or uh, the animal or human who are feeding on this uh, uh, barley? You mentioned that. Am I right? Yes. OK, yes, yes. Act actually, uh, this is not a modification. We didn't use any type of modification. Both of the plants, the Ethiopian uh, barley is a food barley, and also the Japanese barley is also a food barley. We just use a normal crossing. Uh, we cross them, we breed them by pollinating uh, the two plants, and we checked whether uh, the presence of insertion of this one kilo base pair from Murasa Kimochi because Murasa Kimochi has originally the one kilo base pair insertion. It is not genetically modified. It is naturally occurring. Why Murasa Kimochi has one kilo base pair insertion? It takes us to the genesis of the soil of Japan. That is because a volcanic soil. So in volcanic soils, it is acidic soil. As a result, this uh, barley which grows in this region has to cope for the acid stress in that region. As a result, it has this one kilo base per insertion naturally. It's not human made, but rather it is natural made. So we just use breeding, a normal breeding uh, following the normal uh, Mendelian pattern of breeding. We didn't use a genetic engineering approach here. Thank you. If I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Yeah, we have a question here. Uh, why did you work on the second generation, if two? Uh, yes, uh, we uh, we want we uh, we worked on F2 generation because F2 generation we get it the maximum segregation of the gene. Okay. Uh, I have a question also. Uh, do you think that the one uh, kilo piece insertion uh, in, the, in the gene also uh, provides tolerance to heavy metals uh, in generally, cadmium, other uh, heavy metals, or just tested it under uh, an ammonium? Um, it is already proved actually like, you know, there was a research ongoing and after that there are like, you no know, three papers which is published. Uh, yeah. This HVAST gene is not uh, tolerate, like, you know, chelating for heavy metals. It only works for uh, aluminium. Ah, okay, so it's a specific, yeah. yeah. It is a specific and actually, as you know, this uh, HVAST gene is among the meat family, that is meat drug toxic uh, gene, which is abundant in the majority of crop plants and also bacteria. But you know, mm. when we uh, when uh, you work with the bioinformatics, all of the genes have a different pattern, like, you know, yeah. we don't know which one is which. So, for example, HVAST gene is the closest relative is like, you know, the rice uh, ortholog, which is about 85% uh, similarity. But, you know, yeah. if you take the HVAST gene from barley and compare it with uh, wheat, there is also significant difference. So, what is the uh, uh, opinion is uh, that planters naturally, uh, they, they have this uh, capacity in order to uh, live or survive in that particular environment, and they have different mechanism in order to chelate and uh, yeah. uh, sequestrate different type of heavy metals. So we have to work in each of the crop. Okay. And uh, for also for this insertion, uh, did you uh, identify the Protein product of that gene after the insertion, because it's one kilo piece, it's like big insertion. So, uh, in a study about the, the product, like enzyme, protein, or just you would study it? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we wanted to do that. And first, like, you know, we, we, have, we have to make sure uh, whether this uh, insertion is really working. 
So that's why we start from the agronomic perspective. But you know, now we have identified those fixated lines, those F1 lines with uh, uh, deployed one kilobase per insertion. So we can work with them in the future. That is our future plan. Okay. So, so any any more questions? Uh, anyone has a question about the, the lecture? So I think, by the way, yeah, no more question. Um, thank you. I would like to thank you again for for this. Really, this is very informative lectures, and uh, I'm thank sure you. that um, all audience uh, get, uh, got very useful info information. Um, and for the agents, please um, follow up for next seminar. You will find uh, links of the website. And um, we will issue a certificate of attendance, the information in the website as well. So at the end of all seminars, we will issue a certificate for attending all seminars together. So and you don't have to attend all sem seminars. It's a time of uh, in terms of time. So we don't have so much time to produce uh, each uh, each seminar, uh, a certificate each seminar. So we will produce a certificate at, at the end maybe in August, but we will send you by email all information needed to issue the, the this certificate. Um, please share the website, the mailing list, if you'd like to um, um, to receive, want to receive more emails about the upcoming lectures. OK, thank you, Doctor, again, and uh, see you next week. Thank you very much, and see you. <laughs> I'm really okay. humble. Bye-bye. Oh. OK, bye-bye. We will keep uh, the event for uh, more, uh, more 15 minutes so to get time to, to register yourself. Thanks for all.